Hindu, it could be Muslim, it could be whatever. Because I mean the designer, the intelligent designer? Exactly the designer. Well, they, they, they try they argue that they're not identifying the designer. They're only seeing design, and we're not going to say who the designer is. And so uh, the proponents of intelligent design... Never. Because I mean the designer, the intelligent designer? Exactly, the designer. Well, they, they, they try... They argue that they're not identifying the designer. They're only seeing design, and we're not going to say who the designer is. And so uh, the proponents of intelligent design will say that they have their, um, a big tent and they encompass many faith traditions and, uh, uh, and even people who have no particular religious beliefs. And that's true. Uh, but it's also true that the vast majority of um, the main the leaders of the intelligent design movement and many of those who f are most excited by this idea are, uh, uh, tend to be more of a fundamentalist Christian bent. And then there was the evidence of the, the wedge strategy that I talked about earlier that was entered into court, which um, describes a strategy that suggests intelligent design is just a means to an end of, of building a more theocratic society. Uh, the, 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 the people who produce this document downplay its significance, but uh, others seem to suggest that it, it was highly significant. Yes, in the back there. Thanks. Um, so from your understanding, I guess, with um, like your research or that you've done on sort of the creationist slash intelligent design, um, their, their, their distaste for evolution, how much of that is, is it because it's, it conflicts with their, the, you know, a sort of literal trans, translation of creation story and Bible, and how much of it is, is it because the way we, evolution itself suggests that, you know, man was descended or shared ancestors with, um, you know, with animals. How much of, I'm wondering if this, this, the uh, distaste is coming from the fact that we don't want to be related to animals in any way. It's sort of like we want to kind of continue this idea that we're a higher being and to somehow relate us to a monkey or something makes us less. And if, for instance, if evolution was taught so that, okay, well, mankind is taken out of the evolution, but everything else is, evolves, would they still care as much? Would it be like, um, like oh, okay, well, that's fine, as long as we don't have to be labeled as an animal ourselves. Because if, if that's the case, that they still, then the claim that it just that it conflicts with a literal translation of the Bible, like, one hold the same weight. So I'm just wondering, there seems like there's two different reasons. Because you talked about some people make jokes about, oh, we descend from monkeys. And that doesn't suggest that it's because it's a violation, it conflicts with their understanding of the Bible. It's the, this uproar of like, how are we related to monkeys? We shouldn't be related to monkeys at all. I'm sorry. The no, no, no. It's, uh, I, you know, it's interesting. I think um, there was testimony from the science teachers in Dover who said that um, they didn't even talk about human evolution because that would just upset too many people. They just talked about, you know, uh, finches and, uh, and, uh, and other animals when they delivered their lesson on, on evolution. They avoided, uh, like, the, uh, like the plague, the idea that humans evolved because it would be too controversial. And that's very common. You know, if you could focus on those little, uh, you know, microorganisms evolving or Darwin's finches, maybe it'll be okay. Uh, but as you know, it, obviously it wasn't okay. There was still a lot of uh, objections, and the school board ultimately felt there needed to be yet more what they termed balance in into how the how this information was presented. So I, I'm not sure that just taking humans out of the equation um, is really the solution to end, ending that conflict. Yes, so, since I'm not really that good at science, but I, I'm imagining at some microscopic level they could actually. You can actually do an experiment where you see multiple generations of this microorganism organism evolving over time, and what happens if you have an, of a creationist or intelligent design person sitting there looking at that? How do they explain that and say like? Well, you know, I mean, we do know what happens. For instance, the phenomenon of of, of bacteria becoming resistant to antibiotics is a product of evolution, of natural selection. Um, and there's all sorts of other examples where we can see uh, the evolution of. Uh, of, of creatures, it's, it, it's really not arguable. So what the critics of evolution do is they, tr they suggest, well, there's actually two processes of evolution. There's one that's called microevolution and the other called macroevolution. And microevolution is changes within a species and macroevolution is one species transforming into another, uh, distinct enough to be considered a new species. Um, so that's, that's how they try and address what you're describing, because there's really... Reluctantly, there's, there's a concession that, that some aspects of what they like to call microevolution is, is possible. Yeah. Uh, 
that's speciation. You know, they'll concede that, but... I'm sorry? Speci no, I'm saying... I, speciation I, I, is the more <coughs> controversial, the idea of a new species. Um, I mean, I've had some creationists concede the fact that, you know, because I've always said I've looked at the theories over the years, and I think there's considerable evidence that it isn't all a falsehood. And they agreed with me. They were saying as far as speciation goes, they think it was valid as far as that went. Well, the other thing that's, that's controversial in addition to the emergence of new species is the idea of common descent. And this is a real important aspect of evolution, and it has to do, it, it's, where we get confused and say, well, man, uh, man uh, evolved from monkeys. Well, actually, monkeys and, and chimpanzees and humans have all, according to evolutionary theory, been evolving for exactly the same time. It's not like someday a monkey is going to turn into a human. Monkeys are as evolved as we are. They're just evolved differently. And the confusion is that if you accept the idea of common ancestry, then we're related at some point to every living organism uh, on Earth through through a, a distant descendant, and the, uh, it's believed now through the um, examination of genomic evidence and, and other information that chimpanzees, or actually bonobos, are the closest living creatures genetically to humans, and so therefore our common ancestor has to be the most recent, something like six million years ago is what the scientists are now asserting. And it doesn't mean that we descended from chimpanzees or monkeys. It means that there was a creature that's now extinct that had qualities that both modern chimpanzees possess and modern humans possessed, and that those populations separated and went to different environments and evolved in different ways into the creatures that we call humans and chimpanzees uh, that we recognize today. That's the idea of common descent. So it doesn't mean uh, we descended from monkeys. It means they're our distant cousins, I suppose. But that's that's the idea. I don't know. Maybe that's no less objectionable to people, but it is different. Can I get a second question? Um, the uh, Discovery Institute uh, website is uh, has some uh, information on there. I'll call it uh, suggesting that you didn't give them a fair shake uh, in this book, and that. Um, and, and, and I'd like to ask, what, to what extent did you give the people on the other side of this controversy an opportunity to be heard? How did they react? You know, how did that figure into your research and writing sure. of this book? Well, uh, that's, a, that's actually an excellent question. Well, I, I, I don't want to talk too much about what's on the Discovery Institute's website, other than to say that their comments uh, are, are strange and that um, the person writing them has admitted he hasn't read the book. So uh, I don't see how he can knowledgeably comment on it, but, you know... Uh, I would say his, his comments are not intelligently designed, I suppose. Um, but to the extent that they would speak to me, I, I really tried to uh, receive information, to interview, uh, and to treat fairly uh, people on all sides of this issue. Um, one of the leading